first one. And I learned, which was to me the most important thing, was that they had framed me in 1972. And I'm going to skip ahead a little to some of the stuff that there were more lawsuits. Anyway, oh, at the end of 1979, I finally saw the documents that had been seized. There were 23,000 documents. And there were documents, I'm sorry, 23,000 made available to the public. And there were two documents that finally made it very clear that I had been criminally framed. And um, it was very important to me that at last I was publicly able to proclaim my innocence and not worry about uh, what anybody would say and that I no longer, I always felt that I had to hide the fact that I had been arrested. And um, if I would meet someone and say he had any political ambitions, uh, I wouldn't tell him why, but I would quickly stop seeing him for his sake. So it was something that I was hiding and that was affecting my life in various ways. Um, we found one document that apparently indicated that they were considering the use of the mafia on me, but that they had decided instead to criminally frame me uh, so that Scientology would not look bad. We found a document, excuse me, we found a number of documents that proved that this uh, fellow who had been helping me, I thought, during the period that I was uh, having such a bad time, uh, he was calling in a diary into Scientology as to what I was doing, how close I was to suicide, and, you know, cheering me on like, you know, she can't sleep again, and uh, she's talking suicide, wouldn't this be great for Scientology? Very painful reading the diary of somebody that you think is a friend and uh, is wishing you dead and working in your behalf towards that direction. Incidentally, this particular fellow's name was Jerry Levin. They changed his name to Don Alverzo, and he became one of the biggest dirty tricks operatives down in Clearwater. He also was the person sent to Washington who planted the bug in the IRS. We saw a document called Operation Freakout, which all uh, Mr. Flynn started to show you before. I think, uh, if you remember, I had mentioned these very bizarre phone calls, people posing as me. We think that they were trying to test my voice because part of Operation Freakout, it, Operation Freakout consisted of uh, six different ways to try to get me jailed again since the charges had been dropped. One of the ways was to call in bomb threats uh, in a voice that would sound like mine. Another was to write bomb threats, very similar to the original ones, but uh, pasted on Writer's Digest stationery so that they would come to the conclusion that, uh, the, the FBI would come to the conclusion that this must have been done by a writer. Uh, Operation Freakout consisted of plans to have somebody pose as me to find out what I was wearing, have someone dress like me, look like me, and then crack up publicly and try to get uh, me arrested for that person threatening to bomb various places. The other documents that I saw was that a number of these lawsuits against me were being maliciously created. For example, they were bringing my book, uh, The Scandal of Scientology, into countries where it had not uh, even been published. And they were saying, you know, so brought the book in so we can sue. Uh, the reason for those terrible calls that I had mentioned was that they had put my name up on walls throughout Manhattan and uh, with my phone number so that people would give me these calls. Operation Owl was in there. Incidentally, I don't know if I mentioned that Operation Freakout uh, originated in Clearwater, even though the basis of the attack was against a New York resident, namely me. Uh, this has been showed you Operation Owl, which also originated in Clearwater. Oh, a, a co copy of my diary, the one that had been mailed to me, uh, was found in a file marked National Council of Churches because they had hidden a lot of their uh, the stuff that they shouldn't have had. And um, there were also things that I didn't even know that they had done. For example, my mother once complained to me that she couldn't figure out why for the last few years my father kept being audited again and again and nothing ever turned up. He's an excruciatingly honest person. And there was an order to give an anonymous tip to the IRS that my father was evading taxes. Now, I don't know if that was the cause of it, but I'm saying that it was this type of thing. Uh, I also learned from the documents that they were suing me for things that were true. For example, uh, they repeatedly sued me for saying that Charles Manson was a Scientologist and there were 50 to 100 documents showing how they were trying to hide the fact that Charles Manson had studied Scientology. Uh, there were surveillance reports, 
I think I'd mentioned that I'd been followed at various times and was pretty sure of it. It's kind of spooky sitting there and reading, you know, well, she turned up 80th Street, uh, walked for five minutes there, stopped in the candy store. And uh, there were reports that my friends were being harassed. Uh, there was a notation to uh, cause trouble with this uh, gentleman that I mentioned. There were spies' reports and tape transcripts uh, of telephone conversations that I had had with people. The, I, I think I, I spoke to 60 Minutes when I was down here in Clearwater last, and I, I said then that I had been saying that these types of things had been going on, and people kept saying, well, what is she talking about? This is a church. Uh, and it was an incredible vindication to look at these documents and see that everything I had said about Scientology since 1968 was true, and that they had turned out to be worse than anything I said or had even imagined. Uh, now, Scientology at that time had said that they had changed, and I know because uh, Gabe and Maggie Gazaris mailed me the St. Pete Times and the Clearwater Sun, and I read that this is what they told you. While they were saying that, they had learned where I was in Washington, D.C., in fact, the Washington Hilton, and planted a bug by my bed there and also a bug on the telephone during this period of time while they were making these statements in Clearwater about how they had changed. And uh, I do not believe that they have changed, and that is one of the reasons, or the main reason, I wanted to come here and warn you, because I have been studying them for many years, and I have heard them say that they have changed, and gee, they don't, they may even issue that kind of statement after this is over. Well, you know, there were some things that were said, but, you know, we don't do that anymore kind of thing. And uh, I've heard it before, even before I started researching Scientology, they were saying this. For example, in 1965, there was something called the Australian Inquiry, a, a commission to look into Scientology. Anyway, after studying Scientology, the commission came to the conclusion that Scientology, quote, Scientology is evil, its techniques evil, its practice is serious threat medically, morally, and socially, its adherents often sadly deluded and mentally ill. And at that time, Scientology issued a statement that, of course, they had changed. In 1968, I believe, was the Foster Report when the English held an inquiry to look into Scientology. And Scientology issued a statement that fair game had been cancelled and that the disconnect policy had been cancelled and that everything had changed. In 1975, they had World Prayer Day, and the press almost believed that time that they had changed. In December of 1976, when I settled with them, I believed they had changed. In 1977, when the FBI raided them, they said that they had changed. In 79, when statements came out about what was in the documents, and in 1980, again, they were telling people that they had changed. And my final point um, is that I believe that they haven't changed. I believe that their basic policy, ever since the policy was first written, has been the fair game policy. The policy is to trick people. The policy is to sue people. The policy is to lie to, uh, to people and to destroy them. I certainly know from a personal standpoint. And so uh, I've only briefly told you some of the things that they've done to me uh, so that you're not deceived by their true nature. I've been studying them 14 years and unfortunately have been a victim of this cult for 14 years. And I believe that Scientology has never changed, will never change, and will keep issuing statements to people saying that they have changed. Thank you for your, <clears throat> let's say uh, thank you for your story and uh, thank you for the evidence that relates specifically to Clearwater. Uh, I have uh, at various times talked to uh, members of the Church of Scientology have told me that they have changed too. As, uh, recent, as recently as Hubert Jentz of, uh, a few months ago who said that they have changed and uh, I thank you for telling us the story. I don't know you, what you, uh, every uh, story today seems to get more incredible as, as the people come on. And I don't know how you could survive what you have survived mentally. You must be one hell of a woman 